Hello, today I'm going to show you how to move data from a relational database and do some JSON data modeling. I'm going to show SQL Server to start because that's what I know, but this process will be similar if you're using Oracle, Postgres, MySQL, etc. I have two tables in a database, invoices and invoice items, and I'll just run the queries here to show you what's in them. So I've got uh, three invoice rows and ten invoice items rows. This data is normalized, so invoice items has a foreign key to invoices. So typically if I want to get an invoice, I'd write an inner join and get uh, four records back. So let's say I want to move this over to Couchbase. The simplest way to get started doing this is via CSV. You can export from relational to CSV in a number of ways. Yeah. SQL Server Management Studio has a UI, so you can do it manually. You can, you can create an SSIS package. So I'm just showing you here from SQL over to a flat file and uh, file name and so on. I can uh, go through that whole process. I can create an SSIS package. There are some command line tools to do this. I'm not going to go through the whole process here. I exported these CSV files earlier and I put them on the same machine as Couchbase Server. It happens to be running in Docker, but that doesn't matter for this video. And so you see if I list them here, I've got invoice items and invoices CSV. And I'll just uh, cat them both out here so you can see what's in them. There's the invoice items and I'll cat invoices out and that's what's in the invoices CSV. So these are, are both on a Couchbase Server node. I'll switch over to the Couchbase UI. I've got two empty buckets. One is staging and one is operation. Staging is where I want to start. I'm going to load the CSV data into this bucket using a command line utility called CB import. Now this utility lives in Linux at opt Couchbase bin CB import along with some other command line utilities. It's going to be slightly different folder for Windows and Mac, but it'll be there. And it can import from CSV or JSON data. So let's, it's also in the path here, so I'll just do CB import CSV to get the, the basic manual for that. And there's also documentation on this at couchbase.com, especially the generate key stuff I'm going to show you in a little bit. So I want to import CSV file, CB import CSV. I'm going to go to the cluster and I can find that cluster by going localhost. Uh, username is administrator. Password is password. The terrible credentials don't actually use them. The bucket I want to put them into is called staging. I want to import the invoices CSV file and I'm going to give it a key. I'm going to base this key on the primary key in the relational database which is in column ID, but I'm going to prefix it with invoice colon colon. And I'll just use ID there. This is kind of a, a template that it's generating here. Invoice colon colon, and then the, the primary key number will be imported there. So we'll go ahead and run that. It's imported successfully. And I'll show you here that in the background, we'll see uh, those documents show up. Three items show up in staging. If I look at those, you'll see each document has a key corresponding to the one I generated with the template. And the CSV data has been transformed into uh, flat JSON data. Okay, we go back over to the Couchbase command line and we'll do the same thing, mostly the same thing for the invoice items.csv. We're gonna generate the key a little differently. Uh, if you remember those the invoice items did not have their own primary key, they just had a foreign key. So when we import them into Couchbase, they need to have a unique document key. I don't plan on keeping these items separate for long, so this is just sort of a placeholder key I'm using. Invoice item and then colon colon some UUID that's going to be generated by CB import. So we'll go ahead and execute that. And so at this point we've got pretty much exactly what was in the relational database but it's now in Couchbase. Each row corresponds to a document. So there's 13 items in here now. If I zoom in a little more, 
you can see we've got three invoice documents and we've got 10 invoice item documents. Now in some situations, you may want to keep it like this. This may be good enough and just go from here. Um, but I want to talk about JSON modeling. And this is really the question when you're doing JSON modeling, when you're moving from relational to non-relational, non or when you're just starting out with non-relational, is how do you actually decide how to model your data and the relations to the data? And uh, you can you know, understand the basics of the data format, of course, and how JSON works. That's all pretty straightforward and mechanical. The real work is deciding how you relate your data. And this requires a thought about how your data is going to be used. So there's really two approaches. One is the normalized approach. And this is what we just saw with the CSV import, is that each piece of data has their own document, and they relate to each other via some uh, information uh, that refers to other, other documents. So we're splitting our invoice into four documents in this case. The denormalized approach, or the nested approach, is where we have a single invoice document, and it contains the items within the document itself. And so it's nested in the document. There's one document instead of four represent an entire invoice. And this is where the modeling uh, really requires a lot of thought and a lot of communication. It's not something that you can do mechanically every single time. There may be scenarios where you want one approach or the other approach or some mixed approach. So you may already be thinking that the, the nested option is better for invoices already just because it's a more natural fit. But it's not always straightforward to know which approach to use. And so one way we can do this is go through some rules of thumb to think about how the data is structured and how the data is accessed. And I'm not going to read this whole table to you here, but you can see that based on the many-to-one or one-to-many type relationship that we have, we might want to consider nested or separate. And then depending on how we're reading and writing the data, are we reading and writing just the parent and the child separately? Are we reading them both together, writing them both together, and so on? So we have to think about the actual application. We can't necessarily know this just looking at the data itself. We have to think about how the application is going to access the data. And so I've gone ahead and made some assumptions about this invoicing system. And your assumptions may differ based on how you're running your application, how you're accessing your data, and so on. But I've made some assumptions that, first, a user is going to view the entire invoice as one thing, uh, including the invoice items. That when they click on View Invoice, it's going to bring up the whole invoice on the screen. The second assumption I've made is that when a user is creating a new invoice or making changes to an invoice, they're going to be updating both the roots, invoice fields, and the invoice items together is one operation. They're going to make, make changes to potentially both of those when they update and when they create, of course, they'll create the whole thing, the invoice and the items. And then furthermore, there may be some parts of the system, but not as many, that only care about the invoice root data and ignore the items, or vice versa. They only care about the items and ignore the invoice root data. That's still a possibility in my system, but it is in the minority of the use cases that I've got. So based on that knowledge, if I go through those rules of thumb, then I can see that I know the relationship is one to many. A single invoice has many items. And I can see that the reads and the writes are mostly going to be the parent and child fields together in one operation. So based on these assumptions and my research about the system, I've decided that nested objects is the right design. All right. Now that's a really quick exercise in modeling. In reality, that may take uh, a long time for you to figure out every piece of data in your system, how is the correct way to map it, uh, how are we going to access this. So it, it takes a lot of planning and collaboration and communication to figure out what's the right model to go with. But we've thought through the modeling. We're going to switch back to the UI here. We've thought through the modeling. We've decided we want to embed those documents. So what I want to end up with is three total documents. Instead of 13, I want three documents, and I want the invoice items to be nested up into their parents. So there's lots of approaches to actually doing this. I'm going to keep it simple and use Couchbase's built-in nickel query language. This is SQL for JSON tool. 
So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to make some changes to the data that I imported. I'm going to uh, set this type field to invoice uh, on the invoice documents themselves. And this is going to come in handy later. I'm going to identify these documents by saying they must have an invoice num field. The invoice items don't have invoice num. It only exists on those root invoice documents. So that's a safe way to differentiate. But I want to set an explicit type field on there instead of just making the assumption that invoice num uh, is the, the field that I want to pivot on. So I'll go ahead and execute that. And I go back over to my data here in staging. And I can see that my invoice now has this type invoice field that identifies that document as being a invoice document. These other invoice items, they do not have a type field on them. So the next thing to notice is that in these invoice item documents, there's a remnant of the relational database here, and that's the foreign key that point to the parent invoice. Now remember that the invoice documents now have a key that looks like invoice colon colon number. So invoice colon colon three would be the corresponding document here. So I want to transform this field to point to the correct document. I can again do this with a nickel statement. I'll update staging. I'll alias this as s this time just to keep it simple. s.invoiceID. I'm going to change that field to have a new value. The new value is going to be invoice colon colon as the prefix and I'll just use the invoice ID, uh, tack it on there to the end. I almost made the same mistake here. Invoice ID equals invoice and invoice ID. Okay, and execute that. And this is going to align with my key strategy. Yours may be slightly different depending on how you want to create your keys, the semantics you want to add, things like that. So if I look here at the invoice items, you can see the invoice ID which used to say three, now says invoice colon colon three. All right, so the next part is we actually need to combine these documents together. Before I do that, I need to create an index. I'll call this invoice ID on the invoice ID field in the staging bucket. I'm going to be doing a nested join and it requires the field to be indexed, the one that I'm joining on. So I'll execute that and create that index there. Now before I do any actual loading of the data, I want to try out a select to make sure the transformation will look how I expect it to. So this means instead of using an insert, I'm going to start with a select. This is an old trick from the relational days. Before doing insert, update, delete, run a select to see and make sure that it's going to affect the data how you expect it to. So I'm going to do a select and we'll come back to that from the staging bucket, and we'll alias that as I, and this is a nest. This is a type of join, but the result of this join is going to be nested into a JSON array instead of being brought up to the root level of the document, which is exactly what I want to do. If I wanted to bring them to the root level, I could use the join keyword instead. But I'm going to go with nest, and again the staging bucket, this time alias as T, and T for items. We're going to do a nested join on a key. So we have to join on document keys in this version of Couchbase Server. Uh, this is Couchbase Server 5.0. In future version coming up very soon, you can do a full ANSI join on, on any field. But this is all we need for now, just joining on the document key based on the invoice ID. And we need to specify the left-hand side is uh, I. So it's, it's, it's not uh, confused about that. And then I say, okay, where only want to do this for the invoice documents. And then back at the top here in the select, I'm going to select everything from I. So all the invoice root information with a wildcard. I won't probably end up with that, but that's a good way to get started. And then we'll take everything that's nested into T and we'll label that as an array called items. Okay, execute that. And here are the results. So you can see that we've got a count of three here. I've got three total documents. One, two, three, that correspond to the three invoices. Within the invoice, you can see all the root level stuff here, the bill to, the invoice date, the invoice num, even the old primary key from the relational is still in there. The type field is in there, ship to is in there. And I've got this items array 
that was created from the nested join. This is pulling in all those invoice items. And you can see based on the key that's still in there that these all correspond to invoice number one, which is what this one is. And down here you can see invoice number two has these items that correspond to invoice two and so on. So this is exactly what we want from our transformation. So the next step is to actually load that data into the operation bucket. I'll do that with an insert. So first, let's change the select up a little bit. I don't want to select everything from that document. I just want certain fields. So let's start by saying I just want the, the key of the document. I'll alias that as, as K. And I also want to just pull in specific fields from the invoice document themselves. So invoice dates, bill to, uh, invoice number, and I also want to make sure to pull in that items array uh, from the T, and I'll alias that as V. All right, and so I can execute this, and you can see the results there. I've got a K and a V for each document, and, and the V just contains the, the bill to, the invoice date, the invoice number, and the items. So this is what I actually want to insert into the operation bucket. So insert into operation. This is a separate bucket. And uh, it's all, you're always going to specify key and value with an insert because that's uh, all, all Couchbase understands is, is the key of the document and what goes in the value. So in relational, I'd have to list out all the individual fields up here at the value. I don't have to do that here, but instead I do it down here in the select statement. Okay. Execute this. And so if we go back to buckets, we should see now that operation should contain three documents, the three invoice items that we transformed. So if we go hit documents, we can actually view these and we'll click on an individual invoice document here. And you can see this is the denormalized nested version of the JSON data model. And if we just go back to our original thoughts about the access use cases, we know that if we want to get an entire invoice to view, it's one operation. We get this document by invoice colon colon one. When we're creating a document, we create a single document. We insert a new document with a new invoice key, invoice colon colon four, for instance. Or if we're making changes to an entire document, we can update an entire document based on the key. So we still have a one-to-many relationship here as well, but it's a single domestic array instead of several rows with foreign keys. And in fact, we can actually remove this. This is just uh, extra information we don't need anymore, that, that key, because it's now domestic to the document. So there you have it. We've gone from a normalized relational database to CSV to JSON documents and then denormalized them into aggregate root JSON documents. Thanks for watching.